Well, Robert Olds, the English Premier League is, I believe, the most watched sporting league in the world. It's a multi-billion pound industry. Would it be that big and that revered if it wasn't for the foreign investment? Well, the foreign investment would, would usually be welcome, but sometimes this is sports washing. These are people with unsavoury... Who reputation. cares if you win the league? Well, the thing is... Come over to Tottenham and start sport washing Spurs. Well, well the thing is... Give me some trophies. The thing is... Politics now and sport aren't two separate things. They're indivisible. They are, you know, we have footballers who are now human rights activists telling the government what to do on policies. We cannot have a situation now. We'd be good to go back and have sport completely separate and it wasn't polit political at all now, but that's not the world we live in. Now it's deeply ingrained with politics and we see this has imp important implications internationally. We gave the uh, Olympics to Beijing in 2008 and China became more oppressive. Given the Winter Olympics, even though they, they've arguably been committing genocide in Xinjiang province and, of course, giving the World Cup to Russia in 2018. And well, we're that, off to Qatar, don't forget. Well, Qatar's kind of a different point because Qatar actually changed and is, a, is actually a model of how things improved. Qatar actually improved their labour laws. It's still got a long way to go. But they're, in a sense, an antithetical because they've, they've, it's been a force for good. And Mel, Nelson Mandela, he actually said that sport has a power to change the world. Indeed, it does. And Qatar's are probably the one example where we've given, uh, uh, the international community has given a major sporting tournament to a country and there's been some improvement. But, but Robert, what about those thousands of construction workers who died building those stadia? What about the fact that gays are imprisoned or even stoned for their lifestyle choices in Qatar? And we're about to go there this summer. That's really interesting that you, you say that about the Qatar because a lot of those stories appeared in The Guardian and we think actually that they were somewhat not true, to put it, put it bluntly. There's other countries that are, uh, such as the United Arab Emirates and Bahrain, we're going, we're going to be a Grand Prix in Bahrain and there's not a talk of the human rights abuses there yeah. that were committed by Saudi Arabia when they essentially took over the place. There, there is a, a very unequal depiction of various countries and the Qatar mm. is actually welcoming gay couples to go there and they will be dis people can wave and, and the going back flag. to Leicester of course Peter's hometown club that is a very positive story about foreign investment isn't it Robert Oh, yeah, absolutely. But, of course, what do they want in return? What's the price? What do we know about these people? How will it reflect on us? You know, football is, of mm. course, very important. But, of course, at, at what cost does it have? At what cost to the people when people's reputations are being sports washed, when Roman Abramovich has been alleged that he's supplying steel to the Russian army, which is now at work in Ukraine. That's something which is something we should not necessarily be oh, proud about. Okay. So there's, there's a cost. We can be proud that our clubs are winning. But they were winning before in Europe uh, in the 1980s. We dominated Europe and that was without the big money because English players had passion and English fans were very passionate. And that's in the, in the, in the Premier League and the English first division then was had the most driven football players who just really wanted to succeed. And we could always beat the Continentals because of that drive. So we don't necessarily need the big money to win. And Robert, briefly, what is the best model for football club ownership in this country? What we need is to improve the directors and, uh, and owners test to make sure that people who are suspected of uh, criminal activity in their home country or even in the UK cannot get involved in football. We just can't afford the costs to be associated with it. We need to make sure that clubs are properly audited, they follow good financial management so they aren't going to be turning, uh, going, going bust and people's heritage being wiped out because some clubs are on the brink of bankruptcy and we've seen sub clubs lower down in the league um, become no more. And that's a real shame because there's hundreds of years of history and England has a great tradition and, that, and we can't yeah. divorce ethics now from the beautiful game. We can't actually separate the two. It has to be whiter than white and appear to be so as well.